save more spirits. Spirits, located at 233 Alewife Brook Parkway. I picked up the underage operative from the Cambridge Police Department on the afternoon of August 6th. I collected all items from the individual so that there was nothing on their person and gave them one marked $20 bill. We reviewed the License Commission's compliance check guidelines and the individual signed the Agreement of Participation Waiver of Liability Guidelines. The underage individual entered the establishment. I waited outside of the premise on the sidewalk with a clear view of the door. When the operative exited the establishment, they were in possession of a six-pack of beer, which Officer Zito and I then immediately retrieved along with the change. I also asked if the cashier who sold them the six-pack had asked for identification, and the individual informed me that they had not. I returned the six-pack and change, informed the cashier that they had sold the six-pack to an underage person, and requested my March $20 bill back, which they returned. I then filled out inspection form number 989. While I was filling out the inspection form, I heard another voice behind the counter say, It's Michael. The city is doing inspections. At that point, Officer Zito and the cashier responded, Too late. Having just come from Cambridge Wine and Spirits and interacting with Michael Young, I inquired if it was Michael Young on the phone. The woman at the counter told me that it was not. The form was signed and a copy was left with the establishment. Based on information received from an investigator, Bubenik and Officer Benny Zuno's August 6th underage field investigation, I performed the follow up investigation of Save More Liquors. I contacted Michael Weiner, Save More Liquors. Mr. Weiner and I met on August 14th, 2019, in which, after discussion of the situation, he stated that he had called his employee to tell her that there was an underage gaming process in the area. When I asked Mr. Weiner how he had known, although hesitant to say, he eventually said to me that Michael Young from Cambridge Wine and Spirits had called him. I gave Mr. Weiner an inspection form for violation of Cambridge rules and regulations, signaling an employee and hindering an investigation. Thank you. Counselor? So, um, Investigator Bubnik, um, do you routinely um, just give a violation notice or do you give out the reports of your uh, staying right. in this case? Are you talking about alcohol compliance checks with an underage Alcohol operative? compliance checks. No, not regularly. So you don't give any other report other than just a violation? Just the inspection part. And on this particular day, um, you did six things? I'm sorry. I believe so, yes. That's at least approximately correct. And five failed? Correct. Um, so have you had um, the opportunity on other occasions to go to save more spirits? Uh, I've checked just regular sort of compliance checks on a weekend night, went and saw to see if anyone looked like they were real, real young going out to buy alcohol, and I hadn't found any problems with it on a previous occasion. Is that somewhat regular that you, you're out doing that? Uh, uh, for this establishment, I may have done it once or twice in a couple of years, so semi-regularly. And that you've never had any reports in the past of any problems at this establishment? I've had no other violations that I had found with the establishment. Um, I have some documents. Sure. Can I approach? Since uh, 1982. And, and since 1982, um, you've moved 
ones within the mall. Yes. The same mall. And um, had any violations since 1982? No. So, um, just so, did you terminate the person that did the underage uh, sale? No, we did not. Um, she has been retrained. She was uh, recently out for an extended period of time battling cancer. She uh, was able to then well enough to come back to work uh, where we uh, kept her spot. So she was able to come back and uh, be trained again along with the rest of our staff uh, to better learn from her mistake and you know, act as a warning to future employees that uh, this will not be tolerated. So the policy that uh, in this particular case of, for this employee is that you thought this was a, a learning experience and that all the other employees could learn from it? Yes, we allow for someone to be terminated should we make that determination in our handbook. However, in this case, we decided that it would be best for the other employees to learn from her. And so um, what was your policy at the time of this? Um, incident. Um, at the time of the incident, our policy was to card anyone who looked under 35. Um, and since this time, we have changed our policy to more actively reflect what we'd like to have happening. Uh, you know, you train somebody, and the best they can do is listen to what you told them and try and get it right. So now we have a policy of before you even complete the sale, you look up and you ask for the ID. I'm Once sorry. you look at the person, you then can determine whether or not you want to continue that process and say, oh, you don't need to take out your ID if it's you know someone's grandmother, grandfather, and they feel that that is unnecessary for them and it's a burden to have to take out of their purse, you know, their wallet, um, so that they are able to make that determination after they've already asked. We feel that being proactive in that way is better than having to make a determination at the moment and make a decision that will get somebody uh, sent up in front of the board here. Again, we'd rather be able to have the, uh, the IDs presented first and then say, I'm sorry, you, you're obviously a I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't catch when you started. You said that the policy was you would card anyone who looked under, was it 35, 35 or 25? 35. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. And so, um, since, since this, um, what, what other things have you done? Um, we've uh, had a training, uh, bat training, beverage alcohol training through MassPAC where all of the employees, uh, except for one uh, person, were trained. That person is currently scheduled to be trained at another uh, training coming up this month, excuse me, next month, October. Um, we've made sure that we have more than ample lighting in the building to make sure that anybody looks. Uh, if there's a question of their age, we posted signs regarding everyone being aware of what our policy is. We've reissued our employee handbook uh, and plan to update that again. Originally, we issued it uh, some years ago. So the information in it is good, but the dates are difficult to understand. For example, it would say if it was issued in 2015, what the current date was for somebody being over 21. So those dates have, have changed. And we've asked all of the employees to sign a document stating that they have read and understand our policies regarding uh, identification. And so, um, you have every employee trained, correct? Not just employees that are working registers or whatever. You have that's every correct. single employee that works in the store, whether they work in the back of the store or not. Is that your policy? That's correct. We want, we want to have everybody trained because everybody should be in a set of eyes to be able to, you know, see who's coming in the store and be aware of what's happening. And at any moment, somebody could, you know, need some assistance at the register, and we want to make sure that they're properly trained. So, um, you've been an active uh, member of the industry in Cambridge since, since what, 20-some-odd years? Is that yes. 
Yes. And so what, what are the things that have you done as far as being uh, involved in, in uh, trying to combat underage drinking? Um, uh, I also, as, as Michael Young, a member of the uh, Cambridge Prevention Coalition, working with Frank Connolly to come up with and draft the 21 proof trainings, uh, as well as working heavily around the uh, keg policy here in uh, Cambridge some years ago, discussing uh, the best ways to uh, make sure that underage people do not get access to alcohol. I've been a treasurer of uh, CLAB and a co-chair of the Taste of Cambridge for a lot of years. <laughs> I, I can't go remember exactly how far back. Um, Taste of Cambridge has uh, one goal, which is to raise money for groups to use for substance, to prevent substance use and abuse uh, of children and adults. And uh, since I've been a part of it, we've raised over $200,000 uh, for that. Uh, it's something that's very important to me, both as a retailer and in my own personal time. So um, you heard Michael Young testify and you heard uh, in, uh, investigator Inspector Boyer testify, testify about the uh, phone call that was made to you. Um, do you routinely speak with, with uh, Mr. Young about uh, issues as far as being a licensee? Yes, we, you know, we chat, uh, I would say, every month or so when we were having our, our meetings, we would chat. And since then, we've chatted uh, off and on as a relative in uh, Florida, right? Yes. <laughs> Who lives across the street from where my wife was. So, you know, we, we chat, we're friendly. And it's not unheard of for, uh, for uh, in this business, for people to be less competitors and more working towards the same goal. Um, and so, uh, while there's no excuse um, for not following the rules and regulations, you were totally unaware of, of the regulation when, when that phone call made and when you called the store. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and, and when you called I'm the sorry, was, is the question that he wasn't aware, you weren't aware that you could call your employees to warn them? That is correct. It's been, it was my experience that in the past that the ABCC and the city have provided warning before noting that there would be a state coming out in October or November or the fall or um, we actually just received information from the city of Somerville for another one of our stores that there'll be upcoming compliance checks. Um, and I thought that this was in a similar vein. But you, you understand uh, oh, as far as this. The commission that uh, ignorance is not a, an excuse, or, yes. or and that uh, um, there was no intent to hinder a violation, uh, hinder a, an investigation. In fact, the, uh, the violation had already occurred. Correct. So, what was your intent when you called your employee? Uh, I asked them to do their usual due diligence in making sure that everybody who comes to the register that needs to be checked for an identification is checked for an identification as per our policy, as per the handbook. So, Madam Chair, Commissioners, um, there's been, um, actually, Michael's father is the president of the Mass Package Store Association. I think, uh, I think you're aware, Madam Chair, um, they have some very active uh, programs to make sure that to, to combat underage drinking. Uh, the family has been very involved uh, with the store and other stores that they own about combat, combating underage drinking. Um, occasionally mistakes are made um, based on the fact that they've been there for 37 years in this location and um, I think even longer in their Somerville location. And uh, this is the first violation I've ever done for them, violation hearing I've ever done for them between their two stores. So um, I would, would ask that you take that in consideration. Um, I know that this is a serious issue, and it should be. And um, as you know, Madam Chair, I do this all over the state. Uh, 11 out of 13 failures is rather alarming, and uh, it's probably something I think it's more than uh, just one factor that, it, that uh, was involved in that. But, uh, 
ask that you do take into account not only the uh, record of the licensee, but the actions of the licensee in participating in uh, trying to combat underage drinking and, and substance abuse in Cambridge. Thank you. All right. Um, for the record, I'm sorry, I don't have the date that this store exactly opened, um, but it's definitely uh, a while now, um, and there is no disciplinary history, at least as of 2015. Um, with that said, I'd also like to put this one under advisement at this time. Thank you. Thank you.